Pastor Johnson, Johnson. preach the word. word. Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together. Thank the Lord. Come on, stand on your feet. Lift up your voice one more time. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. If you understand that you didn't get up this morning under your own power, but it was he that has all power that allowed you once again to be in this fellowship, you ought to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, we come in the name of thy son, our savior, the promised Messiah, Yeshua the Christ. Lord, we come saying thank you this morning. We thank you for grace. We thank you for mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for that anointing that would destroy the yoke. We thank you for your word that is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. We thank you for that balm in Gilead to heal our sin sick soul. And then Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. Come rest on us, come breathe on us, come reside in us, come lead us, come teach us, come guide us, come show us that most perfect way. And then Lord, we thank you for these people your people the people of God this called out body which you are the head of now Lord speak now like you've never spoken before and then Lord let him who have a ear hear what the spirit is saying to the church amen We thank God. We can't thank him enough for you, the love and the faithfulness and devotion you have shown in your service to God, to my father, my best friend, my pastor, Pastor Raymond, Martin Jr. A soldier's soldier. A man's man. A true lover of God. Without any hesitation. Reservation. When he stood up and declared that he was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to those that believe. I'm just going to ask, is there any believers in the house today? You see, because holy assembly missionary Baptist Church that name means something it should mean something we want to thank God for my best half my beautiful sweet wife who's with me Sister Johnson stand up and let the people see who you are Amen. How many years we've been married? 27. Amen. Amen. 27. Yeah, we thank God for her. I come on assignment to minister to you today because you're going through a great shift now. And no one here should take it lightly. Satan has already been dispatched from the pits of hell to Holy Assembly to fulfill his threefold mandate to kill, steal, and destroy. And if any of you think that you're going to go on down the highway as usual, you have another thing coming. If any of you think that it's going to be church as usual, 
you have a rude awakening coming. For the God I serve, according to the prophetic signs in heaven, earth, and hell, is shaking everything that can be shaken so that those things that cannot be shaken may remain. And I'm here to tell you this morning, holy assembly, which means separate, holy, separate, different, sanctified, holy, assembly, we come together, forsaking not the assembly of ourselves together for the purpose of praise, worship, prayer and thanksgiving sealed with the word of God that gives a guarantee that no weapon formed against you shall prosper the scripture says we know what we worship and they know not what they worship we worship God seek those to worship him in spirit and in truth. So God is looking for spiritual worship because the rehearsal is almost over. Let me say that again. The rehearsal is almost over. I believe that the time is coming that we won't be able to dress up to come out. You will have to go with what you have on your back. I believe that everything we put in place because of the word of God coming to fulfill, being fulfilled, you won't be able to practice it as you have usually practiced it. You're going to have to know what you know, believe what you believe to do in these last days what God wants you to do. Now, you're special. I go all across the country and I've never seen a church this small with so many men in it. Every man in here stand up. Every man in his stand up, every male, every male. You come on, sisters, put your hands together and thank God for the men. <clears throat> Amen. This is a man's world, but it wouldn't be nothing without a woman and a baby girl. Uh, now you women stand up and you men, let's celebrate each other. Come on, come on, come on. Ah, oh, we're going to have some church today. How can two walk together unless they agree? Amen. I don't write out no sermons. I don't do that. It must come from here. I just want to uh, thank God for the officers and the ministers that have really, truly made me feel welcome as I've come back to the state of California to fulfill the request of my father and his final wishes. I'm not a professional funeral goer. I come at his beck and call while on his bed of affliction. I want to make that clear. I want to also say to you that this morning at the Martin's resident, the family came together, the seed came together. When I say seed, I'm talking about Pastor Martin's natural children. Say that with me. Say Pastor Martin has a natural seed that belongs to him and him only. And I'm going to respect that. Come on, somebody. Oh. 
See, Holy Assembly, you are his spiritual seed. And they are his natural seed. But if you know anything about the man, I know you couldn't tell the difference for the love he sold for either seed. That's a God man. Minister Todd Granger, God bless you. Be praying for you and praying with you. Minister Artonia Watts, God bless you. We are praying for you and with you. Deacons, Paul Hughes and Thomas Paul and Richard and Yahoo. Did I say it right? God is with me. Richard Truss and Greg Jenkins and William McDuffie, my friend. Gerald Evans and Raymond Martin III. I want to call, I don't usually call names, but I want every name that should be named to roll off my lips this morning. I want to speak some life this morning into this body. This body needs life, renewed life, renewed daily life. Yesterday was used up yesterday. You need a fresh day today. And every believer, if you're hooked up and connected to God the way you should be here, give you a fresh perspective, a fresh anointing, a fresh understanding. Nothing new. There's something you didn't see last time that he's going to trust you with this time. You hear what I'm saying? Every time I pick up this book, I see something that I didn't see. It's the only new thing about it, it was new to me yes, until God revealed it to me. See, I'm, I'm talking, I'm preaching now because you got to get that kind of mindset. You see, because some people, when you don't know it and never heard it before and God gives it to somebody else, just because you don't know it, you want to reject it. Now, your spiritual leaders, they should always have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. They should have that kind of ear to hear. And if you don't hear, brother, don't make nothing up. Because this is not the time to make anything up. God is talking. He is speaking to the cosmos to the world <clears throat> right now as I speak in Greenland 10 billion gallons of water is melting off of the glaciers 10 billion gallons gallons of water it is coming through the channels guess what working its way to California and New York. That water, once it reaches the Pacific and the Atlantic, is going to rise. And then that that rises up must be taken up through evaporation in the clouds. And then as soon as the clouds get heavy enough where it can't stand no more weight it's got to release it and the release usually is called a hurricane a tornado or a cyclone are you ready for the hurricanes the tornadoes and the cyclone because man has gotten so full of himself that he's going to become disrespectful of that which God created with his mighty hand where the scripture is being fulfilled when it says 
the love of money is the root of all evil and you have some men sitting in high places that love money so much they're willing to tear up the world and kill everybody and everything in it to have their way for filthy lucre oh i wish y'all to preach pray with me today so Satan knows that his days is numbered. He knows that his assignment to kill, steal, and destroy has been counseled by the Most High God. And he's getting ready to step in and stand up and say, I was just waiting for the right time, the right moment. I was just waiting for the right season to stand up and let Satan know that he has taken nothing from me. He has not won a victory. He is still damned. He's still doomed and he's still destroyed. Somebody say amen. So he wants to come up in here and tear up what God has built up through the faith. And the only way he can do that is through one of you. The definition of devil, say devil, means to deceive, a deceiver. The definition of Satan, say Satan, means to accuse, to be an accuser. You get a deceiver and an accuser together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You got trouble in the house when the people have been at ease, like he told Job, with the keys. Right. Turn to somebody and say, Don't be at ease with the keys. I'm not talking about this key. I'm talking about the keys that he gave unto Peter when Peter declared and answered right when um, he was asked, who do men say I, the son of man, am? Some say John, some say Elijah, or one of the other prophets. Who do you say I am, Peter? He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. All in Yeshua said, Peter, flesh and blood did not give this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And because he has chosen to give it to you, Peter, I give unto you the keys to the kingdom. And whatsoever you bind on earth, I will bind in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth, I will loose in heaven. Don't you know we're in a season right now where God is getting ready to bind up some things and he's getting ready to lose us some things. He's getting ready to raise up some young soldiers. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Some young soldiers. And look, when God raised them up, you all the ones that know the way, just step to the side, let them on by and say, go ahead. Some of y'all said, he took his text. Man, I'm going to take a text. I, I have a tendency. That's why my father loved me. To be just straightforward. If what I say hurts your feelings, something wrong with you. When I say to you what I say in love so that you can live and not die. The only disagreement me and my father had, there was no disagreement, but we discussed. I said, Dad, you got to rebuke sometimes. You can't let these folk think everything is lovely all the time. And everything is just good and wonderful. And I love you and you love me. And because you love me, I love you. And oh, we just get along. And that's, that, 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 that's, that makes us a success. No. 
that make you a setup. Yeah, that sets you up. Because when when the storm comes, you don't know what to do. You don't know how to handle yourself. And then you want to say, well, where's the love? Where's the love? I mean, I'm a good person and I've loved everybody. Why is this happening to me? You hear people talk like that sometimes. That's because they never would go to spiritual boot camp, get, graduate to infantry school, and be declared a show enough soldier for the Lord on the battlefield. That is more than just singing a song. I'm a soldier. There was a sweet spirit when we left the Martin's house. And I called him together and I said, I can't leave this house to by the permission of my father who is not here now, given to me, set this house in order. I said, I will not leave this house to go to the other house until I'm sure that this house is set in order. And we shared with them on, in an intimate way about love and the love of God and loving one another. And after we shared with God's help, Satan got the hell out of there and shut the door. <laughs> Behind him. Now, I'm in this house. And I'm on a sign. Not for anything that I would get out of this assignment, but being counted worthy to serve my father. Not anything more than one day hearing well done, good and faithful servant. No more pleasure than knowing that this church will go on and be engaged in ferocious spiritual warfare in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, our Christ, who was sent through 42 generations by Yahuwah to do what none of us could do, order, that we might have a right, not to life, but eternal life, abundant life. So, Go with me in your Bibles now. In the book of Jude. The book of Jude. We're going to be reading a few verses. But first, in, and you don't have to go there unless you want to. I want to read one verse that I feel led by the Lord to read to you. Holy Assembly. In Matthew's Gospel, verse chapter 26, verse 31. You might want to write this down and make note of it and go back tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and let this verse echo in your spirit Matthew 26 31 this is Yeshua or who some call Jesus talking then said Jesus unto them all ye shall be offended because of me this night. It is night time for Pastor Martin. The day is far spent and over. 
weeping may endure for a night. But I'm sure joy has came in the morning. For it is written. That simply means that it's already been recorded in the Hebrew scripture or what you call the Old Testament. It is written. That simply means that this is a word of prophecy that must come to pass and be fulfilled. Now let God be the truth and every man a liar. God said it and it surely, if it has not happened, it is on the way. In this situation, we have saw it fulfilled. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd. I will smite the shepherd. And the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. Smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Peter, impulsive Peter jumped up and said, Lord, not me. I won't ever do that. I'll die before I leave Holy Assembly. Lord, I, I promised you that I was going to serve you till I die. Well, we know my father passed, but just for understanding, pastor has died to this time and this spear and some of you have been with him many many years the Lord has smited him he has removed him from our presence he has gone on to the next level of truth. He has stepped into what the Apostle Paul called a mystery. Things that were once hid from him have now been revealed. A great separation from that which was carnal fleshly, weak. A separation has taken place where only the God that we serve can snatch him out of us, separated and put one part away while he takes the other part to his bosom. Many want to go to that place called heaven but not many are ready and willing to die. And the only way you can get there is you must die unless you are still alive when he returns. <clears throat> so he's gone, father is gone, pastor is gone, bishop Martin, he was a bishop, he was my pastor. He, he oversaw a $2.7 million church being built in Lorraine, Ohio. Oh, Y'all don't know, he was an apostle, not only a bishop and pastor, but an apostle. He sowed seed that you don't know about. He built buildings and ministries that you don't know about. I stand here today preaching and teaching the way I do because of Pastor Raymond Martin. He's gone. 
and you're still here. What are you going to do? I know you're going to say, I'm going to try my best to hang in there. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to try to be faithful. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm going to try to be faithful. I'm going to love God and I'm going to love my brothers and sisters. I'm going to be steadfast and I'm going to be unmovable. I'm going to always abound in the word of truth. And we all have good intentions to do that. But let's keep it real. Let's be for real. When you cannot Study your feet in the house of God when you have done all you know what and how to do. There is one thing you must know when you have reached your full capacity and ability. You must know who to call on when you cannot do it anymore you cannot and you should not try to fake it until you make it God will take care of everything that he has not equipped you to take care of if you just let God take care of it he don't want you to try to do something that you have not been anointed Appointed and given authority to do. Come on. Yeah, come on. God is not working nothing out. Turn to somebody and say, God ain't working nothing out. God ain't working nothing out. That is a religious cliche. Oh, uh, I'm going through God is working it out. That is not true. God has already worked it out. He is working you through it. I wish I had somebody that you might come out. God is not done. Uh, y'all did. God is not through with me yet. He through with you. <clears throat> He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He knew you before you was in your mother's womb. We got to go to this book and quit talking religious cliches and stand on nothing but this word. The book. I know y'all don't heard that a thousand times. Well, what the book say? I know you don't heard that a thousand now. Well, Pastor blah, blah, blah. Well, what did the book say? Well, Pastor blah, blah. She, she, and he, what the book say? Satan and the devil I'm saying this with love and from my heart please get this Satan and the devil do not care anything about what you think or what you say does not move him. Matter of fact, he go to laughing at you. What he, he, he said, he started talking to himself. What did they say? And then he said, well, God didn't say that. They saying that. Let me go on and have my way with these people. They ain't learned yet. There is a way that seems right unto man but the end of that way is destruction and death lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God listen now listen now but humbled himself and became obedient even until the death 
of the cross. Humbled himself. Not this devil, this Satan. Let me help you out. See, doing transitions and times in history, one of the ways psychologically people who were ruthless and evil manipulated, controlled us was they put spooks in us. They, they created boogeymans, <laughs> ghosts. And it's sad to say some of us still believe in spooks, boogeyman, ghosts. The KKK would put sheets and hoods on, and boy, that, uh, uh, that would make some people so fearful and frightened. Just the appearance, spirits and ghosts and boogeyman. And they said, that was the devil. Ooh, he's a ghost. That's evil. That's wicked. Yeah, in a way, but you snatch the seat off and slap him. <laughs> Come on. Go to Isaiah 14. The Lord is, is getting ready to use me to change your whole perspective and understanding as far as the devil according to the scripture so you will know how better and be more equipped to deal with him and defeat him Isaiah 14 of verse 12 you with me say amen. amen how art thou fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations for thou hast said in thine heart, turn to your neighbor, see that word heart means mind. It's not talking about that piece of flesh in the cavity of your chest. It means mind, your mind. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high God. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. That word hell literally means the grave. You put dead bodies in graves. Everybody that got an insurance policy, you're going to hell. They're going to put you in the grave. Like it, don't like it, that's a fact. Check me out. The grave is here. The Jehovah's Witnesses got that part right. <laughs> they that see thee, listen to this. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider, listen to this, saying, is this the man? Is this? The man? Wait a minute, I thought he was a boogeyman. I thought he was a spook. I thought he was a ghost. Pray with me, preacher. Is this the man? And it's going to clarify itself, so there's no doubt. That made the earth to tremble? In other words, is this the man that's been raising all this hell on the earth, killing and stealing and destroying? When you have enough spiritual sense to say, Lord, the only thing I can do now, because I don't done all I can do, is be still. I'm gonna take it in a minute, but let me clarify. I just heard somebody say something under their breath. <laughs> Go to Job. I, I, I need you to understand this devil and this Satan thing. Ain't no way in the world you're going to continue this fight with not having a clear, crisp understanding of the enemy. Job, the first chapter. Ah, look at verse number six. 
Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. Let me read that again. Now there was a day. Now, ain't no daytimes in heaven. No daytime in heaven. No days in heaven. Heaven is an eternal place. And the Lord said, verse 7, unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? And he said, Satan said, A big head, a big mouth, a lion tongue. Yes, sir. Satan works in us. And when he works in us, we become Satan. We become the devil. What is the devil? He is a, come on now, a deceiver. And what is Satan? An accuser. How many times has somebody ever accused you of something you didn't do? The Bible says Satan go before God dead night accusing the brother. How many times has somebody had to try to flim flim? And they come in, oh, they come in. They come in with resumes. Oh, they don't went down to the conference and they don't took Hoopology 101. And oh, they don't learn who. And they gonna come in singing like Kirk Franklin and, 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 and James Cleveland and everybody. And boy, they gonna try to turn, the, if you let them in here, they gonna try to turn the house upside down and inside out. And boy, I tell you, they gonna put on the best show they can put on. And some of y'all are gonna go back and you ain't hear no word, but you gonna put your arm, you gonna rock back and forth like this. And yeah, go ahead on, go ahead on. He ain't said nothing. Amen. He hasn't taught you nothing. Amen. But how to go in bondage. How to go backwards. I'm telling the truth here. It don't cost me nothing to tell the truth. I don't have to worry about remembering what I said. Because I'm not telling a lie. You don't have to remember what you said when you tell a lie. He's walking to and fro and up and down. Just like somebody said, well, I still don't get that. I don't understand that. If God is going to be present in this earth realm, and if God is going to work in this earth realm, he must work through you too. If God don't work through you, there's no work to be done. You, you and I have been, been chosen to, to, to let Satan and the devil know that he does not take or steal nothing from God. Adam fell in the Garden of Eden. He fell, but God's going to take that same man and same woman, raise him up, born again, full of the Holy Ghost. I wish I had somebody. And cause that same man to praise him, to worship him, to magnify him. Satan thought he had you, but I come to tell you that Satan thought he had you. He don't have you. you. belong to God. You are not his. You belong to the Lord. This church is a church, a house of God. This don't belong to the devil. This belongs. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And they that dwell therein. to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory majesty dominion and power both now and ever amen now why now because all of the things the Lord has told us that he's going to allow to be unleashed in this world. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. You living and it's coming. It's coming. Matter of fact, the scripture makes it plain when you look at verse 5 and 6 in this same chapter. It says, I will therefore put you in remembrance. Though you once knew this, how that the Lord, had, listen to this now, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed. It is 400 years in Egypt, in bondage and slavery. The Lord sends a deliverer of Moses to lead the people out of, out of slavery. They get 30 miles from Egypt and go to murmuring and complaining, fighting and disagreeing. I wish I come on! Fighting and disagreeing, trying to be in charge and trying to be large. And, 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 and look, and, and God said, wait a minute. Y'all better hear this now. <clears throat> Number, number six. And the angels were kept not their first estate. He not only deal with the, with, with, with the natural, he deals with the supernatural. But left their own habitation, have he reversed in everlasting chain until reserved in everlasting chains until darkness, until the judgment of that great day. He said, Look, I got some perfect praisers. <laughs> Everybody in the choir, stand up. Everybody in the choir, stand up. Stand up. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody staying in the choir, stand up. The angels were created by God to do one thing to praise Him and worship Him in song and worship. The angels. bitter in my stomach and then God said it's well I'll let you represent me again he fired me he forgot fired me this is my testimony my greatest testimony ain't getting saved my greatest testimony is getting restored after God fired me it ain't nothing to, boy when the preacher get fired he pitiful I mean, he pitiful. When God fire a preacher, he is pitiful. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. with power and dominion and majesty. Can I talk about those three things and then go? Dominion, the majesty, and power. I just want to say three words that describe that. Because when it says now to him, it's talking about putting, presenting yourself before God, submitting yourself to the will of God. And God is just so powerful. He's so, he, he's so awesome. He's omniscient he knows everything he's omnipotent he has all the power he has due to my stonomy power nuclear power TNT power all put together all of that power won't don't even match up to one drop of God's power all the nuclear bombs in the world he's omniscient he's omnipotent and then he's omnipresent. He's everywhere all at the same time. He's the only God I know that's there before you get there. He's the only God I know that passes himself going while he's coming. He's the only God I know that never had to sleep slumber. He don't ever get hungry, never get tired. He, he don't ever blink. He don't never miss nothing. He knows everything. He understands everything. He is everything. 
There was nothing that was made without him. I heard one writer says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and there was nothing made that was made without God. I wish I had somebody here. I heard somebody say, he's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's the bright and morning star. I wish I had somebody. Oh, he's a horse pawn in the valley. Oh, he's that one that will prepare a table for you as you go through the valley of the shadow of death in the presence of your enemy. Oh, he'll lead you by side field water. He'll take you to green passes. I wish I had somebody here. He'll let you holler no more, thirst no more. Is there anybody here? Sick and tired of being sick and tired. Well, how did he do this? He allowed himself to be hung up for our hang ups. They hung him high, stretched him wide, buried him in a ball grave. He got up. He got up. With all power. All power. In his hand. And he said, Whom shall we let him come? Stand to your feet. Touch somebody. Holy. Assembly, missionary. I didn't talk about the missionary. Your greatest work is outside these doors. That's the missionary. You want to be blessed? Go to the hedges and the byways. I'm about young men and women. worst, the so-called worst, I go to them and not afraid of them. The worst, the so-called worst of the worst. Sometimes God has sent them through these doors and people will look at them like they shouldn't be here. War upon you. But I'm here to say, and I heard it yesterday and there, but you got to be on it. I'm here to say to you, take it to the world. Take it to the world. And then God, Yahuwah, will bless you real good. By your head, Father, we thank you now. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your people, the church. This body, this baptized body of believers. Sanctify them again fresh. Anoint them again fresh. Give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Give them faith cannot be shaken or moved. Let them walk together as a three-fourth cord that cannot be easily broken. Order their steps in your word. Holy Spirit, lead them, guide them, and teach them into all truth. Now, I declare in the name of Yahshua, Satan and the devil you are hereby put on notice I say like Jude recorded in the book of Moses I mean the book of Jude it is recorded that when Satan when Michael the archangel disputed with Satan about the body of Moses Michael the archangel did not simply said the Lord rebuke you what's significant about that you are part of the body 
of Christ. There's a dispute going on right now in here on how strong Satan is going to come against you. So we say right now, as a preacher of God, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. In the name of Yahshua. And they said, Amen. If you're here today and you have not turned it over to the Lord, come down quickly. Young man, young lady, if you have not turned it over, come quickly. Come quickly. We're going to extend the invitation to make this change.